Three months after a crushing loss in his Texas Senate race, Beto O'Rourke has maintained his status as a rising Democratic star. And now, by way of Oprah's interview couch, he is hinting at a White House run. Oprah asked him for the sit down to, quote, see what the fuss is all about. Thank you for the chance to sit down and see that if you are the real deal. <laughs> Are you the real deal? I feel some pressure now, <laughs> okay. put it that way. Oprah said she first noticed O'Rourke when he made a call to action from the border regarding family separations. Come down to El Paso, to Tornillo, where we are imprisoning these kids, um, something that, that is tantamount to torture, what we are doing to them. And bear witness to this. And, and let's testify to everyone that this is happening in your name in this country. Do not blame this on Donald Trump. Do not blame this on a political party. Do not blame this on someone else. If we are a democracy, then the people are the government. The government is the people. It's on every single one of us. So that was a huge piece of the interview, but really the question of the hour, will he or won't he one run for president in 2020? O'Rourke said that he would be making a decision by the end of the month. So with me now, Gromer Jeffers. He's a political reporter for the Dallas Morning News. He was at the event. Gromer, good to have you on. Um, what do you think? You think he's going to? He is. I think he's going to. I, you know, since his, you, and you're right, Brooke, it was a crushing defeat, a close defeat, but crushing nonetheless. But since then, he's been preparing to, to run. I mean, the, the, the trip that he took to clear his head, you know, all the buzz, there's a draft battle movement out there. And in his interview with Oprah, he's in. He, he, I, I think he's in, unless... And there's always that caveat, you know, if the family doesn't want me to do it, then, then I'll have to reconsider it. But all signs point to he's going to give this a go. But you had mentioned to me a second ago, perhaps, you know, n not fully ex excited in this whole thing would be some Texas Democrats. Tell me why. Yeah, because, you know, he had a close Senate race against Cruz, came within 2.6 percent of winning. Brooke, a Texas Democrat, hasn't won a statewide race since 1994. And because he came so close, they feel like he can run in 2020 against John Cornyn, the senior sen senator here, and perhaps win. You know, he claimed, came that close. One more biscuit for breakfast, maybe he gets over the top. And so <laughs> there are a lot of people in Texas who want him to finish the job for Senate. Mm -hmm. You know, Cornyn, that's a different matchup. But they, they feel it's a better risk than running for president. What about, the, there's this new word that's been coined, betomania. You know, we're, we're seeing this growing fanaticism from young people over a candidate, uh, candidates who really know how to leverage their social media to, to their advantage. But O'Rourke's interview with the Washington Post just a couple weeks ago, Gromer, showed a real lack of policy knowledge. And do, do you think, I'm curious what you're hearing from Texans. You know, are we at well, a point in this country where likability beats out experience and wonkiness. Yeah, I think we are and I think we've been inching that way for a long for a long time. It's it's not so much, you know, that he doesn't have policy chops. I mean, he's been in Congress and all of that. But that was the criticism from re Republicans that his message is pretty pretty straightforward and doesn't have substance. Well, remember in 2008, you know, Barack Obama stormed onto the scene with his convention, well, the convention speech was in 2004, the keynote address. But in 2008, his message was hope and change, and he took a little criticism for that as well. But sometimes that positive message resonates with people, and you don't need a whole lot else. A message, an organization, and a whole lot of money, and that can make a difference. And I think O'Rourke feels like he can do all of that. Sure. And he's looking I, I think, at the I, I field, think, right? I think I think Obama, those who knew Obama, even then Senator Obama, would argue mm, he would never have given the interview the way in which Beto O'Rourke did to the Washington Post, and he is he is he is a wonk. But 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 I, I take your point. I, I really want to get to this question because I right. Nia Malika Henderson, she is this extraordinary you know uh, correspondent con contributor here at, at CNN, and she she you know w was remarking on uh, Beto O'Rourke's recent multi multi state. Uh, journey and then he wrote that she wrote this op-ed and the headline says it all she she wrote beto's excellent adventure drips with white male privilege and so she wrote in part and jack kerouac style he roams around jobless does he not need a job to find himself and figure out if he wants to lead the free world this is a luxury no woman or even minority in politics could ever have 
does she have a point? I love the Jack Carroll. Uh, that, I love that reference. She does have a point. Uh, and when you look at the field, the Democratic contenders, uh, you have a mix of candidates, but the message is the same. They're the party for everyone and trying to be the party from everyone, inclusive, the middle class, the poor, the have nots. And when, when Beto said that he was lamenting the fact that he, first time he was unemployed for about 20 years, that sort of rubs some people the wrong way because there are people out there who legitimately have problems with employment or are underemployed and can't, you know, take a trip, you know, rambling through Kansas mm -hmm. or, or whatnot, you know, decide whether you're running for president. So, yeah, I mean, that's a problem for him. And, and that's sort of a blind spot that he'll have to fix once he gets outside of Texas and in different parts of the country. Sure, if he decides if he to do this runs. thing. Exactly. Right, which you are guessing he will. I have a feeling you and I are talking again, I Grover think Jeffers. He will. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll, we'll hold off on for sure yet, but Grover Jeffers, thank you so much for the Dallas Morning News. Great to have you on. Uh, I appreciate you. Good to be here.